Share my screen. Okay, I am sharing my screen. At which point, I don't know if you've all printed out the printed out the forms that are that are changed. If you did, I I made a mistake and I put in the RPA when I should have put in the listing agreement. So in mine, I switched it. Um, but if you want to, you know, I, I decided just to put them all up here so you can follow along. Okay. So this new, this first one's a new form. First, we're gonna do, there are five new forms, okay? And the rest are all, um, and then 12 forms that we're gonna go over with changes. So this is the first new form and this is, and I'm giving it to you with my handwritten notes all over them, um, if there are any. So this form change, this is great because this comes up all the time. I'm selling a piece of commercial property, but it has one unit that someone could live in. Do I sell it as residential? Do I sell it as commercial? What do I do? Same thing with vacant land. Sometimes we sell a property, and this has happened recently, where it's mostly vacant, but there's like a little shack or a trailer or something on it. Okay, so they came up with a document that says, go ahead, use your commercial listing agreement or purchase agreement, use your commercial, use your vacant land agreement, but then add this. This will talk about just the residential part of that land. This, I, I feel like this is great because I, I get asked this, when I saw this, I realized I get asked this a lot. Like, what do I do if it's combined, if there are two things? So use the agreement for the one that the most of the property is. Obviously, if it's a house with um, one little commercial thing on the back that it's mostly you know, residential. But if it's a commercial property with a, with a unit to live in or a vacant property, we see that a lot with some sort of little something that somebody could live in on the property. Um, whether it be a cabin or something less, less permanent. So that would, is when you're going to use this and you're going to give all the real property, all the stuff that we have to do in residential tenancies that they don't have to do for vacant land and commercial. So it, it brings all of that in here so that you don't have to think about it again. So it's not, I mean, nothing new and different in this agreement. It just tells you what, um, all, it just asks the questions and, and does the disclosures for 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 um, for the residential part. Um, okay, and then these two things are things that they're basically saying is is the re, is these disclosures go for both residential and um, and commercial or whatever else you're you're using this for. So some some go for both. Okay, so that's the residential. Okay. Feel free to ask questions, whether it's about the document or whatever. Anyway, next one. They the next two. They took out the contingency removal form that was that had a place for buyer's contingency removal and seller's contingency removal, and they made two separate documents out of it. So now we have a separate document for seller contingency removal. Okay, and that's it. Seller doesn't have very many contingencies, so it's not a very long document they only have those two you could always add one if seller added a contingency or something and you can you can add on here but this is for just for seller okay and then the buyer sorry these came out crooked i i don't know why they always do um the buyer contingency removal is just usually what we had before a lot of the documents and i noticed this a lot when i took the class a lot of the documents are the changes are to respond to questions that the hotline gets all the time. So a lot of them are just clarification or re, or, you know, re changing the way they said it because people weren't getting it. And I feel like, um, it, but some things have actual changes. Okay. Um, so you see no, not very many changes on this. If you're getting rid of all investigations, including insurability, is that a, is that a contingency for insurability? Um, and, and then everything, but these, again, these must be things, these are not issues that I've seen, but these must be things that the hotline sees all the time, right? That they often, people don't wanna get rid of these two things, but they wanna you know, get rid of everything else. So, so they just added a couple of things to that, but that's the buyer contingency. So now they're separate. Okay, see, pretty quick. Okay, and okay, this, this the next two forms are lease forms and this one is about animal terms and conditions addendum. This goes with a lease, okay? 
It can go with a residential lease, a month to month, or a residential lease after sale. So if you if the if the landlord who's staying after the sale has pets, you may want to add this document so that it tells you what they have to do and what they don't have to do. Okay. So um, they grant permission. You put on you know whatever that it's one. Now you have to say if you have a qualified service animal, a qualified support animal, or just a pet. So this lets the landlord know what do they have, right? Is it just a pet? And then we might have different rules. Um, okay, and the rest of it is all the rules. If you're allowing, allowing the pet, you know, they have to clean up, they have to keep the smells away, you know, that kind of stuff. But um, this is a pretty good document if, for your landlords who are, who are renting with pets or with somebody comes in with a service animal that you should have this filled out. I don't think it's actually required. Um, okay, so they're getting really complicated on this. So this document called the Rental Property Owner Questionnaire is something that if you're representing an, a, an owner, you're supposed to get them to fill out so that you have all this information in one place. Okay, this is only for, for it's, it, it's only intended to be provided with a lease listing or property management agreement with a lease listing so that when you give your, you, you give your, your landlord, your uh, owner, the listing, you also ask them to fill it out or you sit down with them and fill it out with them so that you know, it goes through all the different things that the property has or doesn't have. Um, I noticed that on the pool part, it would be, it. I, I, oh, you know what apartment buildings, depends on what you're using this for. Apartment buildings aren't required to comply with the Pool Safety Act. So it kind of depends on what you're using it for. But if you had a single family residence, and you were using this for the owner, you would want to you would want to put on here. You would want them to know whether it complies with the swimming pool safety law. It doesn't ask that. I, I'm surprised that isn't like a specific question on here. But it would be something we would want them to know if they were in, if they had to comply with it. Okay, so some some units don't have to comply. Multi units don't have to. Okay, but otherwise it just tells you everything you need to know to to, to get a tenant to tell the tenant. Uh, I don't know. It's like just a whole bunch of questions, right? For the landlord. Okay. Notice how, and, the, and this is in lots of the, quite a few of these documents, they always try to protect us. So the red part, unless otherwise specified in writing, broker and any real estate licensee or other persons working with or through broker has not verified this information. Okay. So we're not verifying it. We're not saying we're, we're not saying we're verifying it, but we just want the owner to tell us what the owner knows. Okay. Okay. Now we are done with the new documents. Now we are getting into the change documents. And um, if you have my pile, you might have the RPA here, but it's really the residential listing agreement that I was supposed to put in. Put in the RPA, and I noticed it wasn't revised at all. And then, Cindy. Like, yeah. It's like that. I have a question. What was the name of that? Um, was it the RP? Which one. The rental property? Yeah. RPOD. And that is used if there's a- uh, When you take a rent, a listing for a rental. For, okay, got it. Okay, there's not a lot of changes to the listing agreement, but you should know them. I don't know, I don't understand this. So notice up here, it says items included and excluded, right? Well, then down here now it has smart home features included or excluded. Like, yeah, 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 okay. are open. those not items? I didn't understand yeah. why they wouldn't go up here, but they added that because I, I, my guess is that that's what's getting missed. People well, I don't know. You check to see if it's open in the bottom. The bottom might be open already. Small. You're, you're not muted. Yeah, there we go. Mute ourselves. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So there's that. I don't think there's. Sorry about that. That's okay. okay. It's the first time it's ever happened. Yeah. Um, oh, I don't know. They added this opt out thing and I, I'm not even sure if they added the whole thing or just changed the title. But if for some reason, and, and I, I only have one ever seen one agent do this, um, you know, they have a form to keep something off of the MLS, the SELM. And then they also have the SELI, which keeps it off the internet. 
And I've never seen and I've never seen anyone use the SELI except for I have one agent that used to do both all the time. I, I haven't seen them lately, but um, so I don't know if they just changed the title, but they can elect to um, not don't do that. I don't know. They okay. also have an opportunity now when you get on the MLS, they have an opportunity to register it as a non MLS property. So you don't even have to go through the SELM like you used to. Not if it's. Well, you. Well, you do, don't you? You don't have to upload it. No. But you're right. still supposed to have it in your file. Yeah, you have to have a record of it, but you don't have to upload it. You don't have well, to. I used to it. tell everyone if they filled out the listing at the bottom of the page three and the bottom of page two, where it, is this not page two? Oh, oops. The bottom of page two, where it says, um, wait a minute. Oh, right here. So I'm, my yeah. goodness. Well, that used to be on the bottom of page two. Now it's on page three. <laughs> ah. It was nice that it was on the bottom of page two because you had some space. You could write stuff if you needed to. Yeah. I, yeah. And plus, it was just so easy to find. Um, it was on the bottom of page two. Okay. So, yes. And, it, and they, they say you still need an SELM. And I'm assuming the reason that I used to tell people if you, if you filled this in, you didn't. But the SELM has kind of advisories for the for the client who's not going to go on the MLS where this doesn't really. So that's why they like it. But it doesn't get uploaded anymore like it used to in the old days. Okay, so this is really a clarification. So this is something that um, wasn't clear that apparently there were lots of questions about. They have a lot of these where they just tried to clarify it, but it's not really something new. Um, but this it just seems weird for me. There are different strategies for obtaining the best offer for seller. Seller is advised that certain buyers will prefer not to be in a competitive situation and either may not make an offer if there is an instruction that all offers will be presented at a later specified time or may try to make a preemptive offer that will expire in the hope seller will accept before the presentation date. Seller is advised to discuss and consider the best strategy for seller. I don't know. Does that need to be in there? I don't know. Um, seems like a lot of words that I, I don't know. I just, I don't agree with everything, but anyway, that's in there now. So that the seller is now where it's a disclosure that, you know, gee, there's lots of ways to do this. Okay. Um, and then seller, it, it defaults still to seller instructs broker to present offers as soon as possible. So if you're not going to, if they're going to wait they're they say, you know, gee, let's wait and let's do it. Let's meet like Saturday and you present the whole week's offers, then you can fill that in. But if you don't fill in number two, you need to present the offer as soon as possible. And if they change their mind, you better have that changed in writing because you don't want to, uh, you don't want a seller coming back saying, Hey, that offer was made on Monday and you didn't present it till Saturday. And we checked the box where we, we let it default to right away. That's not right away. You say, well, you told me and he goes, no, I didn't tell you that. You know how that goes. So anyway, Make sure that you that you get that one in, but that's not new. That's just rewritten. I think that's it for the listing agreement. Yes. Okay. Okay. Buyer counter. This is the same for all counters. You're only going to see one today, but this this is added to all the different counter offers, the multiple, the the whatever, the buyer, the seller. It's on all of them. Okay. So this is one where they say it, and it's so complicated that nobody was getting it. So they put an example. <laughs> Which didn't help a whole lot. I, I'm not telling you're reading it. You're going, okay, right. Okay, so this is the example. If the purchase price is a million and buyer reduces the appraisal contingency value to 950. So on the contract, the buyer says, that will, you know, there's a place in the on the RPA where you can put in a different amount for the for the appraisal contingency. So the buyer puts in 950,000 for the appraisal. That means they'll buy it as long as it appraises at at least 950. They have no contingency, even though the offer is a million. Okay. The appraisal gap is 50,000. Okay, we can all see that. It's 50,000. They were agreeing to put in 50,000 more more money, more dollars. If the purchase price is increased to $1.2 million, seller counters at 1.2, the appraisal contingency value shall be adjusted, but it's always gonna be the same 50,000. So that's all they're saying both up here and down here. 
is that we're not going to do percentages. We're not going to say, well, that was this percent of the first sale. So we're just going to keep the same gap. If I was willing to put in 50 before, I'm still willing to put in 50 at whatever price we end up at. And that's all. And that's all that says. But now it says it like twice, once in, once in the writing and once in the example. And maybe people get it. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's complicated. But I mean, it's not complicated, but it seems like they make it complicated. Um, but anyway, that's going to be in all the counter offers. Okay, moving along. Manufactured or mobile home purchase addendum, not the purchase agreement, just the addendum. Um, oh, let's see what they did. Okay, down here. Okay, so they, I, 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 I'm not really familiar with this or with mobile homes that much, but I can't believe, I think this is new and I can't believe it, it wasn't already existing, but it gives the buyer a contingency to get park approval. So I don't know, did they used to not have contingency for park approval? They didn't have um, it written in, but they've always had park approval as one of the requirements. You would think, right? Um, but thing. anyway, so they've added, um, they've added it as a contingency that they have up to five days prior to the close of escrow to get park approval or the buyer can cancel and get their deposit back. So now it's pretty much in writing, like yeah. what everybody was asking. Perfect, that's yeah. good. The worst exactly. thing about so now, it. so now they say it, and it's five days prior to the close of escrow. So, so buyer, you don't have to worry if something happens at the end, and the park does what parks do and does something jerky. Um, the worst thing about it is that how long the uh, such approval shall be obtained five days prior to close of escrow. And if you're in escrow for thirty days, you should have applied for the park approval. You would hope so. That, you know that it's a look. Yeah, and and if I was a seller, I might counter that to make yeah, it you know, exactly exactly ten days or fifteen. Cutting days. You don't cool. want to wait till the last minute and find out you're not getting park approval. Exactly. So yeah, I think that's it on that one. Okay, the probate agreement purchase addendum. Cindy. Yes. Can we go back to that mobile home last sentence? Up here on the top or down here? Um, the red? Letter C, yeah. The last oh. sentence. If buyer removes contingency without first having obtained park approval and park rejects the buyer residency application, buyer understands that buyer may be contractually obligated. I understand that. To complete the purchase, even though buyer may be required to remove the home from the park, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> They're saying if buyer removes the contingency before they get the approval. That's right. And, and let's say buyer has this contingency and let's just say the buyer wants to look really good. So they remove all contingencies, Correct. including this one. Okay. And then they don't get approval. They're saying buyer, you still have, you don't have a contingency anymore. You still have to buy this, this, this mobile home and That's move right. it out of the park. So the buyer may be required to remove the home from the park? If they if they remove their contingency before they have park approval. Wow, so they're going to remove that building. So they don't, right. So you're not, basically, if you're representing a buyer, you're not going to let them remove their contingency before they have park approval. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Unless they have other plans. Okay. So they will allow that. Yeah. That doesn't solve the problem of home inventory then. Right. That exacerbates it. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty, um, pretty drastic. Don't remove that contingency. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, okay. This does the same thing, and and we know we've had this issue in probate court. You know where you have to have court confirmation, and sometimes buyers don't want to wait for it. Some of them make it a contingency that it has to be within, but it's not written into anything up till now. Okay. So if court confirmation is or becomes required, the buyer has not canceled pursuant to, okay, obviously if the buyer hasn't canceled. Um, and the, the sale shall proceed under paragraph, oh, court confirmation required. Let's talk about that one. Obviously if court confirmation isn't required, it's not required. And you just have to send the letter. The sale is contingent on court confirmation, okay? The court shall determine any further increment overbiddings, obtaining a court confirmation hearing date within 60 days after acceptance is a contingency of the agreement in favor of buyer. So it's giving buyer here, oh, a hearing date. So you have to send out the notice 30 days before, I believe. Is that right, Tess, 30 days before the hearing date? 
Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know a lot of probates. I guess not listening. I, okay. I, I know that the 60 days has not been in any of the contracts before. It's just been at the whim of whoever could get it well, done. Right. So and so what happens sometimes is you write a contract for 30 days that needs court approval. And you can't even send the court approval till the end to the, the notice out till the end of the 30 days. Exactly. So I think this is intending to give the buyer a contingency. Buyer hasn't canceled sale, obtaining court confirmation. But you mean when there's a when you're waiting for the court approval, right? And you mentioned that to the buyer, basically the buyer cannot remove that contingency yet. But when but when you are in escrow and all of the contingencies have been removed, that's when you submit that offer to the court. And then their offer is the one that's gonna be submitted in court. Right, so now there's a box to check. And, and again, it's, it looks like you don't have to check it, right? No. It says that, that, that obtaining the confirmation hearing, the hearing date within 60 days is a, a buyer can cancel if seller doesn't get that hearing date in 60 days. Well, the yes. only reason that they can cancel as a buyer is if they don't win the bid. No, this is adding a new cancellation for them. But again, it's not, it doesn't default to that. They'd have to check the box. But if mm -hmm. you had a buyer that was buying a probate property, mm -hmm. you would want to check the box and say, um, this is contingent on you getting to getting us a hearing within 60 days. So it's an additional 60 days aside from the, the 30 day that you were talking about? That's well, like 30 days is usually our contract period where they have to remove everything has to be done yes. and ready to go. And then 30 days to give notice. That's why they give 60 days for right. the, to have the hearing date. But again, they would have to check the box because it doesn't default to that. So my question would be this, let's say for instance, They've already removed their contingency, right? Mm -hmm. The loan and everything because they were approved. So their offer was submitted in court. And in the middle of waiting for the court hearing, the buyer actually cancels. They can't cancel until there's a hearing. Well, because they'd be in breach because they've already... They, they would be on a bridge because the offer... Yes. Was yeah, that's why they're adding this because that because that's happening. They're adding this so the right. buyer has an option that it's taking too long. Yeah. So um, and hopefully the courts know this too. But again, you only have to obtain a court confirmation hearing date. So as soon as you do yeah. that, they can remove their contingency. But what if they lose in court on the overbid? Well, that that's a whole that's, that's different. That's, that's a different that's, thing. That's, now you're in. That's court. in here somewhere else. This is just saying that you have to have the court confirmation hearing within 60 days. It's a new, um, yeah. And again- so it, Is that actually protecting the interests of the seller? No, that, just the buyer. No, just the buyer. But it, but again, if the buyer, if you're a buyer's agent and you don't know that this was added to the contract and you don't know to look for it, you're not gonna know to check the box. Yeah. But if you're a buyer's agent and, and you're listening and you have a probate, then you're going to know that you want to make a contingency for this. Or as a Whether listing it be 60 agent, days or 90, whatever you want to put. But Or as the listing agent, know that they added that. And if the buyer exits look for that it. box, the selling agent, let's not miss it or that's going to be right. a problem because you, we're right, going to have to figure right. that out. Right. So if you're selling a probate, right, you need to make sure yeah. that you check this to make sure that they didn't put something in here. And if you have to counter it, then counter it. And That's before right. I forget, Cindy, you said something about you emailed these documents. I don't, I didn't see that. Can I make sure I get a copy of this? Yeah, uh, I'll, I can. Yeah, I, I, I didn't get it either. It was supposed to go out to all agents this morning. It did. Oh. It, it went out in the, from the master's website and it just says June uh, training or something. June's world. Yeah. And, okay. And, I, anyone needs a copy? I obviously, I, yeah. I have. And, Cindy, for uh, divorce situations, what is the number of days you would recommend to put over there? For the one we just talked about? Yes. What uh, What is the number of days you would recommend? Would you recommend to keep it 60 or is there a specific number? Tess, what do you think? Would you keep it 60 if you were the buyer? I would keep it at 60. That's good. That's long enough. That's long enough. At 60. And you can always extend it. I right, mean, right. Cindy, it was sent, the email was sent at 9.14 a.m. And it says that it's titled June 
June's form released new and change forms with Cindy and Terry at 3.30 p.m. today. Well, just talk about my typo, why don't you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. You brought that up. <laughs> you brought that up. Sorry. <laughs> oh, dispute resolution basically says it doesn't matter if you did liquidated damages and mediation. If it's in probate court, it's in probate court. You don't get to go bring this somewhere else. Big deal. I think you knew that. Okay. The TDS, not a lot of changes. Matter of fact, I think this little red thing on the top is the only one. That's the big change. Across. That's the only one, right? Yes. I think. So again, it says this property is a duplex, triplex, or fourplex. A TDS is required for all units. Notice how it doesn't say each unit. This TDS is for all units or only for unit whatever. So we recommend strongly, highly, that, that if you're selling more than one unit, that each one has a separate TDS and a separate AVID, but it is not the law. And I didn't know whether I was gonna say that out loud, but I just did. So um, it's not required by law, but it is, it's really helpful to protect you and your client. So I would- I agree. I would, I would do separate ones. And now it says that up here. So, right. So they're giving you the option to saying this is for all the units, which I don't know, I don't, I don't like it. Um, but, but we want one for each one because it just makes sense. And why I do all the pages when there's only one chain down. It only gets bad when we that get was the only the, thing on that one. Yeah. Thing. Okay, the additional broker acknowledgement. We use this when we have two brokers, same client. Okay, so that, I don't know. This is another one I don't like the changes on. It's like, I don't think we need a car form to decide what our compensation breakdown is and how much, how we're sharing responsibility. I feel like, that's nobody's business. That's so dumb. Um, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a bridge too far or whatever you call it. Um, so anyway, but that's, what, that's what they've added. They want to know, you know, obviously if, you, if it's a listing agreement, use this one. If it's, a, if it's a buyer rep agreement, use that one. If you're doing it for a purchase agreement only, use this one. And, um, you know, and so they added these that just so you know, just you could leave them blank. You could fill them in somewhere. They have to be. They have to be. Why, why did they do that? Because I guess they're finding that people are not putting them in writing. And so they're like, well, if you're not going to do it yourself, then we'll show you how to do it. So you can use it. I mean, you have to have that stuff in writing somewhere. So you can use this. No one really sees this. I mean, it doesn't go to well, the buyer and seller sign this. Why would we care? It's, the buyer... just, between, it's just between the brokers, actually. It's yeah, just but, why does, but the buyer and seller have to sign this, right? I know, because they're supposed to know how much people are getting paid. Oh, yuck. I thought that was only for buyer's agents. <laughs> is, that, is that in the replacement of the referral or things like that? Or why? No, just, they just it? added it to this. And yeah. they call it an acknowledgement and addendum. I, I, I don't. Yeah, and it's a little different than the referral because the referral is, you know, just a referral fee and things. This is an additional broker acknowledgement. Right. This, this goes when you have a, 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 a listing agreement or a purchase agreement when you have two brokers. Working it at the same uh, time. For the both same client, right. we're, we're both doing open houses. We're both doing whatever. Question. It's Agnes. Hello? Hello. Hi, Agnes. Go Hi. Ahead. For 1C and 1D, it refers to an attached agreement. What agreement are they referring to? Well, let's say that you guys did your own compensation agreement and who's going to do what? You already did it. So you could just say on the terms of our attached agreement, we already did it. We're not waiting for you to do it. So is it a CAR agreement form? No, just on your own. You have a little, you have two emails where you both agreed that we're okay. going to split this Fine. equally and we're going to equally do the work, but it okay. needs to be in writing somewhere. Okay. Yeah. And you don't have to attach it. Okay. That is very common in the very expensive properties that are two brokers or even three brokers they grab their listing and they uh, marketing, you know, you yeah. watch. Yeah. I used to watch. Yeah, I, we've, we've had a fair, a fair amount of people <laughs> listing with other brokerages for one reason or another. I saw it here in Temecula yeah. too, a couple of times. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Oh my gosh. That was my last one. See, nothing, right? Easy stuff, unless you're a landlord. What about the cancellation? It's um, 
it's the the dot you know the changes weren't much but they they went nuts with just doing tons and tons of documents um mm -hmm. making changes that clarify stuff for the most part quick question cindy yeah on the aba what if you're uh you know two weeks in three weeks in and the other agent is not following through on what they committed to do in writing and they like bail they just like call terry no um <laughs> they just disappear <laughs> yeah you know what what app i you know then you have to fight i mean you know you're gonna say you're not doing it you're oh, well i am doing it you just don't see me you know um you know one situation by situation I can't, there's not a blanket for that. Yeah, there isn't a blanket for that. And and sometimes we have to get the other broker involved. And right. sometimes we have to get other people involved to help make those decisions and push them forward. And sometimes we have to amend our agreement. All right. Isn't it best to always put it in an email first and let everybody know what's going on so that there's no secrets? What do you mean? You mean well, I mean, I mean, just you know, call them out on it so that everyone's aware that that's happening. Well, I don't know who you mean by everyone. I don't know if you want to do it in front of your, whether your seller or your buyer, whoever you're. No, coaching. I don't mean that. I mean yeah. the brokers. Yeah. yeah, no, I agree. Yes. I've told yeah. people a lot of times to copy the broker, CC the broker on things. Their broker or our broker? Are you yes. curious? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much you want to stir the pot. <clears throat> Okay, thank you, Cindy. You don't have to do it the first time, but you know, if it doesn't get, if nothing changes or it doesn't get responded to. Okay, okay. I have noticed that that as a as a group, we often include so many people in our emails, and that you know that probably aren't going to read them. Oh, you know what? We didn't have. I, did I take it out of here? We didn't do the um. Oh, maybe I didn't put it in. We didn't do the, what's the one with all the changes, the really long ones, that really long document, the um, SB, no. Yeah, S, that's it, the seller, buyer, it's the statement. Yeah, the statewide. Right. The statewide has some changes on it. Um, I wanna know, has anyone here ever read it ever? I have. I haven't even read it all the way through. So anyone I, I, that ra anyone that raises her hands, I call you liar, liar, pants on fire. Oh, that's yeah, pretty long and pretty boring. <laughs> I you have read sections, it. right? If you had a section, but anyway, it has some changes. You can you can look at them, but it's it's you know something about taxes changed. I don't know. Yeah, but there's just, prorations not really changes changes. and things like that. It's an explanation yeah. of prorations. Yeah. And I thought it was in my pile, but I guess it's not. Are you so, talking of the SBSA? Yes. Oh. Seller buyers. Yes. The I think there were four there were four pages that were wide buyer seller <laughs> representation agreement. I read that before. Yeah. So so is if we went into car, are we gonna be able to see that there was changes or yes. if you and I think it's in my list too when I send it out, but if you go into car and you go to June 2023 forms release, you can you can see all the documents in red line. Okay. And you'll see there's way more that we didn't go way more we didn't go over, but they're not some of them are property management forms and some of them have what the silent changes. Okay. Two oh two three forms release. Is that what you said? It's yeah. June two oh two three forms release. And it's not a bad idea to do that because when they release them in a couple of days, you're not going to have anything redlined anymore. They'll just right. be all the red lines will be gone so it doesn't show you what's changed, where right now you can see what's changed. June 27th, these are coming, becoming active. Yep. That's what I mean. So you just got a few days. Okay, so it's June 27th. Um, another question. Any chance that we can have a recording of this one? Because I missed a big part. It's been it's being recorded. I saw I heard it. Okay. I will ask Robert or, or I don't know, Jesse. I would ask somebody. That's Thank the you. guy. That's the spirit. <laughs> Well, Robert would spirit. be happy to review the whole thing with you. <laughs> oh, oh, I would. Yeah, I would. but he's but, so you know, I know. I I really would love to review all of it, but you know, um, I got the painters coming over, yeah. and, and you have to watch the paint dry. <laughs> I, I got it. Okay, so if anyone needs a copy, let me know, and I'll I'll shoot my copy.
Um, I, it's in two parts. Vianney, I noticed you had your hand up a minute ago. Did you get your question answered? I think she did. Yeah, my question was about that uh, for divorce or probate. What is the okay. recommended number of days? Perfect. I just wanted to make sure you got it yeah. answered. So. Thank you. Cindy, okay, can you send there, me a copy? Yes, I will. Is Kevin, of course. I know who you are. Mm. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I will be sending copies out. Okay, um, anybody you. have any other questions? I'm here. Terry's here. We're here. Call us. Call anyone and ask them. I don't know. But um, okay, Agnes. I'm going to be, you'll probably get the copy with my um, handwriting on it too. Because it's just, I have an idea. I have an idea. How about we just send it to everybody? Yeah. Why don't you just redo what you did or, or what they did earlier? Resend send it? To one admin. Yeah. Okay. Well, I will have has, um, my favorite person, Ashley, do that. Yeah. That has the link on it and they can just click and it opens everything up. There you go. Okay. Done and done. Done and done. Right. Um, okay. Well, anyway, if you have any other questions or any time, obviously we're not, questions aren't limited to this, this little period there for any time. So um, feel free to reach out. Um, me, Terry, if you have any, you know, questions. Easy questions. Yeah, if you have yes. easy questions, call me. And if you have hard questions, call Terry. <laughs> <laughs> he knows way more than me. <laughs> I doubt it. I don't know. All right, guys. Okay, right. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All. Thank you. All right. Talk to you soon. Thank you. All right. Next week.